Welcome to Tell the Damn Story, the show that explores the many ways to navigate the successes and failures that aspiring and struggling writers face to make your journey that much easier. Okay, okay, how we, how, you know what, say hi. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Alex? First of all, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to Tell the Damn Story. We're here to make your writing journey easier, but last week for the Halloween episode, Alex went on a journey. He said that I lost him. I thought he lost me. We lost each other. He was in some kind of cave. I was, I don't know where I was. It was You, you were kicking back wherever you I were. I was kicking being, back, being yeah, brilliant, yeah. Being brilliant um, as yourself. But the result was a really fun episode. At least we hope you had fun with it. And we got to expose you to some Halloween stories and poems and... The idea was to writers. have fun, was to yeah. give you a Halloween party, even if you were sitting at home with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a glass of wine. And if you had those two together, we need you to go and see someone. Because <laughs> <laughs> really? you. you need yeah. some help. But, two different ways to imbibe the grape. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, what, wow. Yeah, that was a wild episode. That was a wild episode. And I, I honestly, Chris, have to say, Chris gave me the opportunity to be the mad producer editor on that episode. I went yes. bonkers. So Alex said, I have an idea. <laughs> and that's what you saw. Yeah. He was dedicated to that idea. And it was, it turned out so much fun to see the final cut. Can, can I give but, a little behind the scenes? That's the thing. We're here to tell you that's not all there was. <laughs> there's, there two, was there's two aspects to that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there's There was so much behind the scenes stuff or conversations that we had before the readings that Alex said, wait a second. That would be another fun and educational or fun and informative uh, uh, episode if we got to pull back the curtain and show everybody what else goes on when we're trying to do something like that now it's not like a spoiler or anything like that no. but if you haven't seen the, the halloween episode you should give yourself a treat because you know especially if you like horror at all we had uh, many people one two three four five. four or five five five, five, five. guests may i till james glenn Rebecca Cuthbert, Tom Snogoski, yes, Janine Atchison, yes, and Stephen Van Patten, yes. And uh, today we're going to show you some stuff from behind the uh, scenes, tell you a little bit, fill in the blanks, all it from the mind of Alex Simmons, <laughs> <laughs> which is a scary place to be sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I, we we it's... hope. I'm hoping that people are, you know what? I had a wacky idea, but I can make it come to fruition because that's really what creativity is. Alex said, hey, I want to do this. And Chris didn't stop me. Just say, yes, go ahead. Let's try it. And but it again, fun. in terms of production, and I know normally we're talking about writing and not production, but let's talk about production for a moment. In terms of production, coordinating any kind of creative experience does require a organization and timing and really some thinking things through and when you run into a wall or when you get tripped up by something or something can't quite work out the way you envisioned it it's about okay how do i improv my way through this or what's another path that i can take what's another way to get past this obstacle to overcome this obstacle so this applies whether you're a performer a writer a producer whatever the end result is supposedly a your best effort, quality product, story, film, play, yeah. dance number, musical composition. And working through the problems is a part of learning, is a part yeah. of growing. So we had several setbacks. Originally, we were going to tape this as one long episode. <clears throat> and then people's schedules didn't quite connect or work out. Right. Chris got sick. I had a bunch of complications coming, and suddenly that one long episode was not going to be possible, in which case we could have gone, okay, never mind, we'll just do A, or we'll just do B, or we'll do something totally different. But instead, we went, okay, how can we do this, but in a different way? How can we make this happen? What other pathways are there? 
And we came up with recording them individually and then knitting them together. And that should have been a smoother experience than it was. But it, more complications came in. And again, it's about commitment. I became truly committed, should have been committed. Yeah. I became truly committed to making that work in some way, shape, or form. My, my, besides the five guests, the sixth element that is a must-see is that after all was said and done with the recordings, Alex went back to the original concept. I was just goofing. I think, who was it? Was it Teal or someone that I was goofing around and I had the Northern Lights behind oh, me? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I just improv what he was saying about the original idea that, oh, oh I don't know where Alex, Alex is in a cave somewhere. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, in the meantime, Teal's going to read something to you. And then that kind of, all of a sudden, when I watch the finished product, I, I like to watch it on YouTube on the big screen. And there you were improving and acting <laughs> your ancient ass off. And uh, it was so much fun to see you <laughs> in the cave and you did the sound effects and all that stuff. Can you talk yeah. about that? Because as it was evolving, I thought that idea had fallen by the wayside and I had only done that as a goof for you because I didn't think my introduction would show up anywhere, right? <laughs> and it didn't. It's not in the episode, right? I don't remember. I don't think so. What, your introduction to- Oh, yes, mine is. Oh, yes, it's that, there. That one introduction is. But then the rest is episode is all you. And when I was taping that, it was just a wink to you. I didn't know that you would use it. And it was delightful to see you not only use it, but like it gave you license to go back to your original idea. And that's the episode, ladies and gentlemen. You get to see Alex lost in a cave, doing all sorts. Of, it's just a lot of fun. And could you talk about that a little bit? Yes, uh, I could. Okay, so again... <laughs> Remembering that Chris and I are writers, and we I improv more than I wrote, but I had initially, when I pitched it to Chris, the original concept, and I pitched to Chris, I had written out an intro for me to say in the cave, and then the idea was going to be that I was going to write, or Chris and I were going to write his, his sections and back and forth like that. We we're going to go back and forth. Wherever Chris was and wherever I was, we were going to have these Inter interlocking moments. And once things started to go by the wayside, we couldn't get people on for the whole show and all that kind of stuff. You're right. I did let go of some of what was the original structure. But the other end of it was once I had all of the recordings, I had, we had Teal and we had Rebecca and Tom and Janine and Stevens was the last piece to come in. Right. Once I had all the pieces together, I was looking at them. I went, oh, no, there's no simple just let's introduce that doesn't work anymore because there was the stories were fun and there was chris's intro with teal and i'm going no i gotta get back to right stuff and well, i can if i don't that, have to, that intro to teal was the only one that was related to your narrative yeah i did not at first get the assignment because as you'll see in these behind the scenes i'm on the deck it was yeah. beautiful weather. Yeah. There's suburbia behind me, not drama, not horror. Yeah. And that didn't work at all, right? So right, which just, is why you won't see them in that episode. See them in this episode, yeah. And I only did the background. I wanted to see if I could find something that just you would get a kick out of. Yeah, and, and, and I'm my... glad you did because it made that the beginning piece. It worked perfectly for that. And then I just worked everything else together after that. I looked at which piece should come next. And then I just literally thumbnail sketched in a little bit of shtick to connect them yeah. and keep the theme. If you haven't going. seen it, it's worth seeing just for the Alex Simmons shtick. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, after I had recorded my shtick and had everything edited together, I'm looking at it, I'm going, no, I, I think we need some sound effects here. <laughs> we, yeah, we, but know. it really made it. It was really impressive. A lot of fun. 
And for those of you who are looking to say, what can I do on a zero budget? Hey, folks, last week's episode, <laughs> I think we spent 17 cents. It was really, it 17 was just five, right? <laughs> what, what is available on my laptop? That's what we did. And the other thing, too, was is the a lot readings. of fun. The readings, because we had Teal's is supposedly takes place. His characters are, are have, having their scene in a uh, cafe or a coffee shop in not a coffee shop, more like a, a Greenwich Village cafe in in, in Lower Manhattan. And mm -hmm. so I found some sort of Little cafe living. background sounds mm -hmm. had to keep that at a nice low level, but it added some atmosphere to that. Mm -hmm. Rebecca's was her character was in a haunted house. And so I just came up with, at night, so you come up with some sounds for that. And again, with Tom and Janine and even Stephen Van Patten's piece is takes place on a, a subway car, mm -hmm. on a ride on a subway car in New York City. And so I found some subway sounds. For and it's just, the sound effects are not meant to equal the voice of. And right. for those just of you who haven't heard it, it's not meant to. Ambiance. Yes, it's, it's just that, a little bit of background sound, just a little <laughs> bit of atmosphere. It, and then again... So when you cut to me in the cave, a little reverb, right? Mm -hmm. And then just to heighten the fact that it's getting spookier and spookier for me, and I really should get the hell out of here, <laughs> was more creepy sounds coming up and stuff like that. So it's having fun. It's playing the tropes, but using the tropes as a springboard into the next moment. And then, and when you look at how I constructed that, it's the same, and certainly I didn't put the hours into it that I would into my, my my writing, but it's the same construct. It's starting with some sort of exposition. It's then moving into an inciting incident. It's rising actions to a climax, and then a resolution and an exit. So it's, again, it's storytelling. It's yeah, all definitely. storytelling with little quick moments of different stories in between. So I think that's so, just a, a fun exercise a fun way to enjoy yourself and again for those of you who who have to do readings if you know if you're doing readings in a public place like chris and i have done you know barnes and noble places like that you have your book or your script and you're reading to the audience there but you can also do readings and record them and put them online in which case yes you can do them to a absolutely silent background or you can throw in a little ambiance and add just a little additional flavor to the experience. Yeah. So just give that some thought. For the tagline for the New York Times full page ad that we could never afford was Tell a Damn Story episode 335, a Halloween special. Come for the stories. Stay for Alex Simmons' through line. <laughs> <laughs> The yeah, adventure I, of Alex was just, yeah. it's, uh, oh man, I will love that. Little for man so in long. the cave, yes. Yeah. So, what are we going to do? Are we going to give them some peeks or what? Yes. Again, as Chris said, we had some wonderful conversations individually and together with some of the writers who did the readings. And we saved those as outtakes from that episode so that we could share them with you here. So, you're going to actually hear some of the conversation that Chris had with Teal around some of the work that Chris is, that Teal has done. Yeah. You're going to also hear the same thing with Rebecca Cuthbert. And she had, she has got quite a lot going on. Right she now. always, uh, yeah. As I got to know Rebecca, there's Rebecca Cuthbert, the writer, and then there's Rebecca Cuthbert, force of nature. And, <laughs> and it's just, She's a fascinating case study in the I, I can do, I am going to do, and I'm going to squeeze 38 hours out of a 24-hour day. And, and, and God bless and, it. It's, it's inspiring and daunting to watch. Because she's not only a writer, and she's also a professor, a university mm -hmm. professor. And she also, I mean, she took a health bullet recently. She was sick for a while and still push through that to do mm -hmm. grading and some other things. So she uh, definitely a force of nature. But the other thing too, is she is such just an amenable, good person. It's just fun to talk to her. She shares her creative experiences so well and so eloquently, and it's a real joy. So her students are lucky and so are we. 
So there's a sex segment with Rebecca, and then there's the segments, little short segments with Tom Snogoski and Janine Atchison in talking about some of the projects they're working on. And you, I believe you had, we didn't get to record the session, but you had some interesting conversation with Stephen Van Patten. Yeah, a lot of it was sending messages back and forth to each other. So I had sent him the pitch and explained that you wanted to do Halloween readings and we were going to do a little recording, maybe up to three minutes, whatever he wanted of the Halloween feel. And I was fully prepared to either do what I did with Teal, which was the one-on-one Zoom or whatever Steve wanted. And Steve... For a particular yeah. reason, don't reveal yet. Reveal it at the end of the episode. Okay. So there's there were reasons why things had to be different. And it's a measurement of how all six uh, guests were supportive of the show. Five plus Alex, you know, as a creative force. <laughs> See how I got over improv my way or past that mistake. Um, but how they were all supportive of the show, whatever it took. And we don't have the audience of this is horror or a writer's digest or something like that but it doesn't matter they believe in the show and they believe in you out there and they wanted to share with you and Good. to find a way to get it done is perhaps one of the best messages for this episode but also to enjoy each other and to have that thrill of just having a conversation with other creatives. And that's a lot of what you'll see today. Exactly, exactly. So we're going to cut to those wonderful segments, and then we'll come back at the end of that, and we'll share a couple of holdouts. Yeah, a couple yes. of things to hold on to until the end, just to share with you. All right? So let's go. Teal James Glenn. That was fantastic. <laughs> it's such a, one of my great loves in life is hybrid and there's such clearly there's uh, a horror element but there's also noir crime classic crime great feel for new york there's so much in here what do you what do you want to tell us about mr paradise there um i summarize it as philosophy and fisticuffs he's yeah. very well read he spent over 160 years in an icebound ship that he found in the Arctic, where he read through their library. He covered quite a bit of gold that was in the ship and other valuables. And when he came back to civilization after a time, he spent some time in Sweden, then in Marseille, and finally decided New York was the place where he could blend. And he alternately quotes Proust and uh, Deschardins and uh, Thomas Aquinas and Shakespeare while pursuing his investigations and trying to find his place in the world. Um, I actually just finished the second book in the series last week. Excellent. Uh, and How you many are you cut? I'm sorry. You I'm contracted for three. I, I would hope to make it ongoing, but my, my goal on each of them is each book, if there was never another book, you would walk away satisfied. Right. Um, but at the same time, I've really tried to avoid sequelitis yes with the second book is just the same book with different character names so the first one is very much uh, a noir murder mystery while this is going on there's a series killer in new york and he goes up against the bund okay. this is this takes place two weeks after the nazi rally in 1939 at madison square garden i weave in a lot of real world facts and a lot of real world people the premise of the the series is that, which she actually said, Mary Shelley heard a story that she turned into Frankenstein, that it was a local legend. The premise is it was real. And even though she did the fictionalized book, mm -hmm. some parts of that book were based on very real things that occurred. And the other thing is that the Roma know this real story. And eventually within the course of the novel, they figure out he's the legend they've talked about. So there's an extra layer to that. There's a whole mythology that gets built 
um, in the first and second books and moves on from there. You have gotten great reviews and great blurbs and great. I, I've been uh, very blessed. Yeah. I think this is going to be great. I myself am waiting for with bated breath to get to dive into it. And I would just let's hold up the book one more time. And, Absolutely. Uh, everyone, oh, I everyone, shouldn't do anything so shameful. <laughs> everyone who's ever loved Frankenstein. This may be the book for you, Not Born of Woman by Teal James Glenn. And thank you again, Teal, for helping us celebrate Halloween. I know when we find Alex, we will be able to show this to him to his great delight. Alex! Alex! <laughs> We hope to get you on soon to talk at length about this and your other ventures. You are always, let's just say hardworking. You don't like a lot of the other words, but uh, uh, a hardworking guy. You can't deny that. I, it, I'm addicted to keys. I must hit them every day. <laughs> it's true. Uh, it's but safer than the other addiction because they keep asking me where I get the blood from at the bank. <laughs> I won't say it if you don't say it. It's awesome to talk with you again, Chris. It's been quite a while, actually. It has been quite a while. I have been hermiting out and going through a lot of changes where we'll have a slice of pizza and talk about it. I do have to go down to South Pennsylvania, or the Wilkes Bar area. Ah. Of but that's the last appearance I have to make for a while. And we'll talk about what the next phase is. But oh, not right. here and not now, because it's Halloween time. <laughs> 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 All right. This has been Teal James Glenn. I am so excited to get ready for Not Born of Woman, which is coming out very early next month. You can pre-order it now, I would assume. On Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Yep. There you go. So grab that, and we're going to keep looking for Alex. Sorry. Hello, Rebecca Cuthbert. Hello. And thank you for um, agreeing to participate in the Alex Simmons Tell the Damn Story Halloween Party. <laughs> this is what it is. I'm just I'm just the muscle here. Oh, the it's holla, all the Alex holla. Party. <laughs> Give it out. Oh, the horror, the horror. Alex is giving out chocolates and, and spreading Halloween cheer through the talents of our friends of the show. And number one on that list, uh, Rebecca Cuthbert. Hello, Rebecca. Rebecca, how are you doing? Hello, and thank you for having me back. And I feel especially honored to be part of the Halloween episode. Yes, it thank you. Well, we're, Chris and I are going to mute our mics. So we can stay focused on you because you are now going to read to us. And what are you going, what are you going to be reading to me? All right. So I'm excited to be reading from my new collection. This just came out this month, just this October. It's called Self-Made Monsters. It's a hybrid collection of feminist horrors with an introduction by the esteemed and fantastic Laurel Hightower. So I've got poems, I've got stories, uh, both full length short stories, flash fiction stories and micro stories. So little tiny bites in between the longer pieces. Um, and I'm excited to read today a short story called Dare You and also a micro piece that is Halloween themed called I Take. Fantastic, fantastic. And great, to great. tell everybody, um, I was lucky enough to read an early copy of Self-Made Monsters, and it is fantastic from cover to cover. So if you like those two stories, go on, go on Amazon or wherever you buy books and pick up Self-Made Monsters by Rebecca Cuthbert. Yes. Friend absolutely. of the show. There we go. All right. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much, so much, so much, so much. And and I think Chris, you just said where where they can get that. There was something else that you you also were working on that can can get through a different publisher, if I remember right. Yes. Yes. So Self Made Monsters is available on Amazon. It's through Alien Buddha Press. And if folks would like a signed copy, they can message me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And I've got another one coming out next month, November twelfth. My first ever children's horror picture book comes out 
through malediction at AEA Press. AEAPress.com is where you can pre order. The book is called Down in the Dark Deep Where the Puddlers Dwell. It is a there monster book, and I'm going to warn everybody that these monsters are not cute monsters. <laughs> We are pretty dedicated. Uh, the publisher is Jason McCord and the illustrator is Dakota Markhart. And if even if you don't want the story, the illustrations are so worth getting this book. They are absolutely gorgeous. And um, I'm lucky because Dakota is uh, an old student of mine. She graduated years and years ago, but she came through my creative writing class and she graduated with an animation and illustration degree. And oh my gosh, is she talented. Wow. So. Wow. That one is is really worth picking up, and it is the first of six that will be released through AEA Press and Malediction. Excellent, excellent. Well, we'll make sure we have some links to make that possible easier for our listening audience. Wow, thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. And now, the hounds, release the hounds. <laughs> thank you so much, Rebecca, for dropping by and sharing some Halloween horror with us. Absolutely. And while, while I here. want to say happy Halloween, I also want to look forward to Christmas because Chris has a little bit of Christmassy news about Soul Scream for us. Oh, 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 oh. What's that? What's that? What's that? We are we're expanding. Uh, when I first did Soul Scream, we had kind of a giveaway to let us let people know that this existed. It was Soul Scream, uh, Come All You Faithless. Faithless. It was a Christmas themed horror, hybrid horror. Um, but it only had three or four stories, including Alex's. Thank you very much, Alex. And now we're going to add about, I think about five or six, including, including, ladies and gentlemen, a poem from Rebecca Cuthbert called Tis the Night of the Krampus, which is told in the, the style of Twas the Night Before Christmas. Excellently well done fantastic thought-provoking oh man it's a lot mm. of fun as will be the expanded come all ye faithless from soul scream and thalazine thank you for the uh, commercial there uh, well it would make it. a night nice stocking stuffer i just want to say it would very it would good indeed. i like it stuff those stockings with with as much uh, soul scream as you can <laughs> yeah, if you have a big stocking around. all six might fit in it that's right you got to have one of those full leg stockings. Either that, you know? or use a pillowcase. I'm not. I'm not proud. That's right. <laughs> That'd know? be good. Or a sack. Just hang it up. Or there. a big Christmas sack, which ties into Alex's Christmas story. You gotta read it to believe it, ladies and gents. <laughs> okay. Well, that's thank in you. Uh, thank the you, thank same you. issue. This was great. This is great. Yeah. Yeah, SVP yeah. Steve Man Patton couldn't make it because he's. Just booked. He's a showrunner, I think, for Fox or Channel Four he, or something. He is. But he's going to record his own and send it. So that's going to be here that's by Wednesday. Lucky. He's a popular, popular dude. He's out there. He's doing yeah. all the things. And then we he's have uh, we have Tom Snagowski and Janine uh, Atcherson. At Atcherson. Yep. I, I can't get yep. her last name right. That's and, right. Yep. Yeah, they're going to do it. Uh, so we have at least four. We have at least yeah. four. We were going to have fun. Teal, but Teal's sick. Oh, no. Well, we're gonna we're gonna check in on him. He came back from World Fantasy with a less than fantastical um, bug of some kind. Yeah. So hopefully it's nothing serious. Nothing and this will we'll, we'll edit all this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you still recording there, sir? Yes, I am. Yep. <laughs> okay, so we'll cut all yep. this part out. Hold on a oh, second here. Let, uh, let, let I want to say thank you so much for having me again. I always love dropping by, and um, I will I will accept every invitation to come hang out with you too. Oh, Thank well, then much. that's it. <laughs> We're good now. Tell the damn story is always better when you're on. <laughs> Let's did interview have... the one who did the illustrations for you. Oh, my okay. gosh. You guys. Yeah, when those when that comes out, let's get both of you on. Please do. I love Dakota. Like, I genuinely like her, which is why we stayed in contact. Because after she graduated, we, you know, connected on Facebook. And so I was just, you know, drop drop in now and then. And so when I got this deal going and we needed... We needed a creepy illustrator. Not that she's creepy. She's a doll. But like we needed someone who could do creepy illustrations, which not everybody can do because a lot of them end up cutesy. And we were like, no cutesy. You know, we were very, um, 
very set on that, you know, right from the beginning that we didn't, there's already cute monsters out there. We think little kids need more scary stuff. And so I messaged Dakota just kind of out of the blue. And I said, hey, Dakota, how do you feel about messed up children's books? <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> and uh, and I didn't use the word messed up, but you know what I said. And she yes, said, yes. Um, disturbing. She said, well, yes. I'm in. And it, everything kind of took off from there. So you know what? Maybe we'll do, Alex, if you want to. We'll get both of them on and we'll ask. Uh, we're going to ask you now, Rebecca, that um, maybe you can forward to Alex a couple of like stills or shots oh, yeah. of her art. And then Alex can pu put them up while we're talking. That'd be a cool episode. Yeah, I would And we can talk about. That. We can talk about, you know, the different challenges from going to, you write so many things from super short yeah, I'm gonna to. I'm going to stop. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, had, we had Rebecca do a complete read plus a promo for her thing. You know, she did two short stories and, a, and then I realized, oops, oops. Like, a, like our first episode. Like our first one. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Episode. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not so, making that mistake again. No. It, See, you were saying, you were saying, I'm sorry, I cut you oh, off. Oh, that's okay. No. Um, so we wrote started writing this together about three years ago. And the seed of it was planted about 40 years ago when Tom and I were in high school together. He was at my house one day, and I down the street from us lived this little boy with some kind of a condition. Nobody knew what he what he had, but he had a really big head. He just like had a very large head. And my father used to call the kid Halloween head. Ooh. And that stuck in Tom's brain for like 40 years. And over the <laughs> years, he had had toyed with the idea. He had notes. He had artwork done, but never wrote the story. And then kind of put it away and forgot about it. And then one time, three or four years ago, we were talking about it. And he was like, oh, I never wrote that. And so the original artist had passed away, but Tom has a friend. He brought him was, back. Just oh, resurrected. Yeah. Um, and Mr. Mr. Hope did some artwork for us and we kind of revived it and wrote, I think we have like the first two or three chapters written. So, yeah. Yeah. But we and just now, have there's like eight chapters. What's amazing about that, though, is the fact that I still had all the stuff from like 40 years ago yeah had no idea where any of it was yeah but i stumbled across it like in this file you know and it made it it somehow made the journey from multiple computers wow so i found it in a file from a file from a file from a file and it's i was like the Stephen oh my god, King I, moment when it won't go away yeah i yeah. was like oh my god i actually have this thing still yeah it's crazy. That's pretty cool. So, we revived yeah, it. Cool. We okay. it. It's a really cute story. So that 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 you held up yep. is a completed uh children's book that is on the market? No, no. no. This is the first chapter. It was just a chapbook that we had um created for the Merrimack Valley Halloween Book Festival. Okay. That we went to three years. It was actually three years yeah. ago. Just a couple, I think so that was the first time we met. Yep. Alex. Yeah. Yep. So we did it. We had a friend, um, a friend of ours, Mark Mestel, put everything together. There's there's artwork in it that is stunning. Let's see if I can find a picture. There's the librarian. Ah! And what else? Brian and his dog. Oh go. my goodness. And yeah, we really should finish it i don't know what the yeah hell. i don't, I don't know. know what's wrong with us but yeah it's like the cutest little thing yeah so oh, we just did it as a way to entice people into like that yes we're gonna have this thing sometime someday okay. someday well someday. then you know you could shoot for next year's halloween yeah because we've been, we've been talking about that every year do. like oh halloween <laughs> <don't>. we get <laughs> that out <laughs> The, yeah, Look, that, the, the damn things waited 40 years. That's long enough. In my, <laughs> in my copious amounts of free time. Yeah. I know. Now you don't have any. You have like very little time oh, left. It's just but. bothering me. Well, I'm glad you took it off, Chris, because the moment you turned the bill around, it threw your face in the shadow. So, Which might have been an improvement. 
Okay, so anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, who's on first? Who's on second here? Yeah, you go first. You want me to go first? You want, okay. to, want to know All what right. I'm? You want to know what I'm reading from? Chris, go ahead. No, I I would have I I might be wrong, Alex, but I imagined you would introduce them, and then we we'll go from there. Okay, so let me explain why there's confusion here, folks, uh, because this is a this is a party in my head that Chris and I have never really had a chance to discuss. So what I'd like to do is, is have you introduce your piece and read it. So that gives me some freedom as to how I'm going to actually knit this together. Because obviously, Chris being on the porch here doesn't actually support him being lost. Do we introduce ourselves or just the piece? Oh, yeah, definitely introduce yourselves. OK. You know, just this, this short dude in the chair reading this spooky story. No, you, know, <laughs> you don't know. I'm short. I could be a tower. I could be a forget. Tower. I've met you. Powerful tower. He could be <laughs> all legs, all oh, yeah. six foot of legs. Yes. Oh, daddy, long legs. Oh, there he is, <laughs> hitting the bottle again. Okay, so whenever you're ready, talk. Okay, I'm ready. I am ready. So, so there you have it. Some behind the scenes. Hope you got some feel for. Well, things go between creatives as oh, before yeah. the camera is officially turned on. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of that stuff there. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's funny, too, because sometimes through the conversations that we have when we're discussing different techniques, you get this. But the other thing I want, I hope that the people who are listening, our listeners, are getting... Or watching on YouTube. Yeah, oh, right. the like watching, and listening and watching, watching and hoping, wishing and... No, anyway, I'm hoping that you folks are getting the, the reality of the fact that we are all human beings, that we have wins, we have losses, we have ups, we have downs, all that. We struggle, even those, Tom Snogoski, I think, between Teal and Tom, I think they've written every book ever printed. <laughs> and they yeah, still yeah. struggle. They still have their challenges. They still have ideas that they want to explore. And they still get excited about it. Right now, Tom is enjoying his excitement over working on the Herculoids. The Herculoids! The big kid in Tom is over the moon, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that says something about who we are, who creatives are. I will say, and I, I think Chris will agree with me, but I will say, never let the kid in you die. Never yeah. bury that kid. Never lock them away in a room and, and throw away the key. For me, the kid in me comes up with the wacky ideas and it's up to the adult in me, who's not as swift, to figure out how to pull these things off. Yeah. But I enjoy still being a kid. I just enjoy the heck out of it at the right times. Well, and I, having I, that curiosity and having that energy to say either what if or yes and. Yeah. And keep going. To see where it takes you, yeah, and that you can see a lot of that in our conversations today. Yeah, and it's, it's, yeah. that takes us to Stephen. That's, One of the yeah. things that was holding back Stephen from doing a similar recording like that is that the adult side of Stephen, he is a showrunner. I think it's for Fox, but Steve, please forgive me if I'm wrong. It might be NBC or something. He's Running a running the floor on the show, helping production and all that sort of stuff, and so he's got that going. The station must be going nuts because of this historic election season. Plus, he had the collective come out with him and book. three other uh, yeah. authors that we hope to have on. That would be a cool panel. We'll see. Yeah. But yet, he wanted to contribute. He wanted to help out. Let tell the damn story. So. Finally, he says, listen, I'm going to record it myself and send it to you. And that's why you saw what you saw was exactly what he sent us. But to have without that, the subway background, <laughs> right, right. You added the subway <laughs> background and that kind of stuff. But to have that kind of commitment to support is, again, how community is built, yeah. how we get to exchange and share and support each other. And it's really, it touched me that he wanted to go there. And he probably did it somewhere between midnight and 2 a.m. or something. Where, yeah. You know, because he's so busy. There were so many things going on. And so, for those of you who don't know what a showrunner is, think of him as a coordinator or a foreman. But in this case, for a television production. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. So he's coordinating a lot of the things, as he puts it, on the floor. A lot of things are going on in the studio when things are being recorded and produced. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. But We have one more yeah. thing to share. 
We do. Yes. In the same feel of wanting to do something special for Halloween. Uh, Alex and I have been talking. And again, it was Alex was the genesis of the idea. But we thought we should cook something up for November. You know, like, See what he did have there. a feast. Yes, the marshal the troops. We can we'll marshal the troops and have yeah. a feast. And yeah. you got to stay around the next couple of weeks to find out what that is and uh, how we're going to do it. But we do promise one, uh, a great discussion, and two, as much fun as we can add to the pot, ladies and gentlemen. That's there right. we go. Yes, there you go. So thanks for that. <laughs> right. And thank you for all the extra work on the Halloween oh, episode. It was a joy. It was uh, a joy. Extra candy corn goes to Alex Simmons. Thank for you. For all his extra For Reese's effort. peanut butter cup. One of the two. Go. Chris, as always, a pleasure. You too, sir. It's always an honor to be in your presence, even on Zoom. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this was fun and a little helpful for you. And we will see you next week with a whole different adventure. You got it. Take care, everybody. Please, in the meantime, I will tell you a damn story. Oh, and, and subscribe. There you go. Bye, Boom. everybody. Peace. Peace.